So if you're not ready for this, then, well, I, I don't know how else I can warn you. Guys, let's go in game, introduce our players to the north side of the map from ESE Gaming. It's our purple Terran player. It's a goodie. And down to the south side, we have our blue Zerg player from Carnage Esports. It's Namshar. Let's hear who you guys are supporting here today. Let's hear if you want to see Carnage Esports Namshar go through to the finals. Or no, go through to the home story girl. Yay, we're in the finals already. Yay. Let's hear it. Go. Cheer for Namshar in these next 10 seconds or so. If you get banned by Moobot, I'm sure my mods will be nice enough to unban you. Um, if any of them are here, perhaps, maybe, maybe not. Um, I will do it manually if you, um, if I have to. And if you're not a fan of Namshar and you're waiting for someone to cheer for, let's hear it for, again, in the top right, top side of the map, the Purple Terran player, Goody. Let's hear who is cheering for Goody. Um, I imagine Namshar might more or less kind of edge out over Goody here, because I imagine a lot of the Goody fans will be German pl uh, German players or German uh, German fans, and uh, they will be probably watching over on the German stream, of course. But let us know what you guys think. Let us know who you guys think will be uh, advancing, who you want to advance, who you think will advance to play in the Home Story Cup 11. Now I'm sure. Starting up with a hatchery first into a pool here on Varney Research Station. Again, I uh, made sure to stock up before I um, started casting this. I went downstairs, got myself a um, drink. I mean, again, Goody already played one TVZ today, and that was a best of three, not a best of five. And it went to all three games, and it took, um, it took, well, it started at the same time as we started casting a series. And then we came out of that series, we casted a, um, we casted a game from another series, and then we casted another series after that. And then we went into Goody's next game. So th these games definitely could take a little while here, so I should probably start talking a little slower, save some things to talk about later in the cast, um, save a little bit of energy for myself, and um, prepare for what could be a pretty long cast here. Now I'm sure coming up the right hand side of the map with an overlord and heading towards the natural of his opponent. What's going on in the chat here? Because we don't really have too much happening at the start of this TVZ. It's a very passive opening from both players. I mean, it's been a gasless triple CC from Goody. Pretty much as greedy as you can get. Uh, but from Namshaw, I mean, he's pretty much as greedy as he can get as well. I mean, without going through hatch before pool, this is as greedy as it gets. Gasless, very fast, third hatchery. So this is going to be greed against greed to get us started here in this. And, um, well, we'll see what happens. Res up mock in the chat. I always want to see Terrans win, but I'm afraid of how long a best of five mech will take. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I believe, I think in the Go for SC2 finals, it must have been a couple of months ago now, I think it was um, a Go for SC2 final between Petraeus and Happy. And they, I think they played five games, which all went to like an hour game length each. It was a little bit ridiculous. It was a little bit ridiculous. Bird won in the chat cheering on Goody. No, I'm saying, oh god, not Goody. I hope Namshar bailing him at five minutes. That's the problem, though. I mean, Goody, he plays so safe because all he really wants to do is survive until the later part of the game. Um, in this case, I mean, he opened very greedily, but sometimes he plays so safe, it's actually very difficult to all in him. Get ready for five hours of games, though. Believe me, I am ready. Shah, Shah, Shah from the Carnage Manager. Hello, Mark. Good to see you still around. He's worse to watch. Happy or Goody? I don't know, actually. That's a very good question. Maybe it's actually to be like a Reddit poll, right? Okay, cool. Cool, let's just keep an eye on the, um... Keep an eye on the chat to, um... See what's going on early on. And I'm sure it's actually going into Rotorod because, I mean... I don't think he's going to really be super aggressive with this. Um, I kind of just think that he's, um, wanting to get this up. So he has a few Roaches out. Nice and early on to defend and... Yeah, he's he's still droning here, as you can see. I had the goody APM up for you guys. 117 average. His um, effective actions per minute is 56 against Lamb Charles 91. <clears throat> what else is uh, going on? 
Nam shall be good to get into the DSCL. Oh, oh really? Um, I didn't actually know about that. Well, that's pretty cool to know then. A couple of Hellions running by here, going to try and get a little bit of damage done. I mean, Goody's not going to be afraid of sacrificing his Hellions early on here because for Goody, he's going to keep making Hellions the entire game. So it's not super important for him to lose them early. Um, he can afford to kind of trade against Drones here. And one, one Hellion for what? Three workers? Pretty good going so far. <clears throat> Hope Namshaw beats this Goody noob. No need to be mean. No need to be mean. As we uh, see Goody just slowly moving towards his third base here. The, the mech is already beginning, boys and girls, I suppose. Five factories. I'm trying not to talk too much because I know for a fact this series is probably going to kill me. <laughs> I can already tell. This um, Hellion moving around a little bit. Zergling a few roaches. Coming up the left hand side of the map. There's a couple of tanks here. I mean, they're not really going to. I mean, these roaches aren't going to be able to do much of all that. Poor Zergling uh, gets a full taste of what it's like to be blown up by a siege tank. Widow mines being added in. We haven't seen drilling claws added on, which is quite intriguing. I wonder if we're going to see some widow mine drops. Definitely a possibility here. As uh, Namshaw, Pneumatized Carapace, Burrow, Glavi, Constitution really just committed into pretty much all of his roach upgrades right now in this game. This group spread pretty good as well. Just being pushed out a little bit onto the map. <clears throat> and a few roaches just moving forward here, but again, they're not realistically going to do too much damage. Goody already prepared with a turret in front of his tank. Siege tank set up at the third base. And uh, this is obviously a. Is that actually going to go down? Marines trying to chase it, but they're just not going to be uh, enough, especially with Pneumatized Carapace up. Vendral Sack's coming in, so uh, I'm sure is actually going to commit in towards a big Roach Drop here. And, you know, a Roach Drop in towards the main could be very effective. I mean, even over this army right now, it could be very effective. And, I mean, it's going to hit in the next minute or so. 3 fours being added on. Which is going to help a little bit because, I mean, the problem with uh, what Namshaw is doing um, with the, um, I mean, I mean the siege tanks are kind of the weakest thing against a roach drop, right? So, this is going to be interesting. A couple of Hellions running along this left side of the map. Namshaw really needs to send something to deal with these because they're going to hit this fourth base. And Gilly might be a little bit suspicious as to why his opponent isn't actually, you know, bringing us to deal with this. There's a single roach popping out. And I guess only two Hellions doesn't need that much of a commitment. So, obviously, he's flying back. The roaches too, as the overlords continue to gather up. The ventral sax is almost ready, guys, and here we go. Namshaw is going to load on up and go in towards, I mean, I guess the main. I don't think he just drops on top of the army. I mean, there's a lot of mines here. There's that ventral sax about to finish up. Some creep being pushed forwards here as well, because why not? He's got the overlords in a forward location. May as well make use of them. Going to load up absolutely everything here. A few more roaches are just going to jump into the ride before it is. They're, like, grabbing the door, like... You know, it's like getting onto a train at the last moment, just grabbing the door, like squeezing through. A few roaches here. Actually, gonna see Goody moving out, and this is this gonna, gonna turn into a base trade straight away? It, it very well could, because Goody's already moving out on the map, and here we go. Namshaw into the main. A couple of mines do burrow here, and um, a little bit of damage done, but not too much. Overseers will provide detection to clean this up. As uh, Goody turns around, some uh, roaches in the middle of the map trying to do a little bit here, but uh, will get taken down, and Goody is already gonna start taking a lot of damage as uh, four, which just popped out there, gets taken down. And um, there's a few roaches left in these overlords, which uh, Namshaw isn't quite uh, dealing with just yet. As here comes the army for Goody, but of course he's going to be on siege as we have a lot of roaches in towards the natural too. Goody already taking a lot of damage here. And uh, Namshaw is going to clean up a few of these Hellbats in at the front. Going to keep moving forwards, moving away again. Uh, this uh, old command is actually on fire right now. He's going to lift up into the overlords and uh, Goody's just going to type GG. What on earth? We just saw Namshaw win in 13 minutes. Just like that. 13 minutes, no problem. This juice is really nice. <laughs> to go slightly off topic, um, it's like strawberry and kiwi juice. It's incredible. It, it, it really is. I, 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 I just saw it on the bench and I was like, I'll, I'm going to try some. Wow, it's really good. <laughs> but um, back to the game. That was um, Goody taking game, uh, losing game number one. Namshaw sure with the strategy to um, shut him down nice and quick, and we're gonna jump straight into game number two, which will be on Coda.
What's going on in the chat? Not really all too much. How must much have I how long have I cast already today? I think we're five hours or coming up to five hours in. We started at four PM my time or five PM Central European time. So we're coming up to about we're four and a half hours in right now, which isn't too bad. Um I've definitely done longer casts in my life. Um, it's actually kind of weird because, uh, you know, again, I was saying this yesterday, actually. Um, it's been, um, usually, I you know, I've been doing a lot of Team League matches recently, and that's been the majority of what I was casting. Um, let's actually introduce our players quickly, and I'll talk about this. So in the top left corner of the map from ESC Gaming, it's Goody. And down to the bottom right, the Blue Zerg player from Carnage Esports. Let's hear it from Namshar up a game right now. Alright, so, what I was uh, saying is, I was saying yesterday that um, usually I cast Team League matches and stuff in best of seven, so we do a best of seven, and usually it ends before two hours, so we have like 20 minutes break, and then we go into another best of seven. It had actually been a really, really long time since I um, cast like an open bracket sort of tournament sort of thing. So say the, um, like I did the, this week I've done Game Bad Open, and I've done the, um, and I've done the, um, the Home Story Cup qualifiers, so it's been quite a while since I've done something like this, or at least it feels as though I have. I mean, I guess I've done like a little bit of, um, I guess, it's okay, I've done a little bit of, um, I like qualifiers here and there for WCS and another IEM qualifier or so, but, um, it feels as though it's been a while since I've done anything like this, and it's a lot of fun, like, you, know, you guys might think I'm crazy, but like, just talking for like a few hours straight, just jumping into a bunch of different games, following a bunch of different players, um, getting to see some best of threes as well, kind of nice. It's um, it's good. I really enjoy it. I'm glad to have the opportunity. I mean, huge shout to Take TV for letting me be the English stream for the qualifier here. Of course, I mean, Base Trade being busy, they were doing their own qualifier last night, and today they're flying away, flying around Canada, um, getting to go to WCS. So um, yeah, huge shout to for the opportunity. Huge shout to all you guys tuning in. Yeah, we've got just just hitting that one thousand viewer mark right now. So um, once again, we hit it just before in that uh, Namshaw Strange series. So again, thank you guys for deciding to tune in, for checking us out, for checking out the stream. If you do enjoy what you hear, then you know feel free to hit that follow button. Hey, Dave San, how's it going, man? Not seen you around for a while. Not surprised to see you here to support Namshaw though. <clears throat> The GGs are legit. Wow, from the last game. Holy crap. Um, got a Reaper opening coming in from Goody here, so a little bit more slander than kind of gasless 3cc. But nothing too crazy. This uh, Reaper coming across the map. Oops. Oh, God. <laughs> that was kind of funny. I was, um, I have like my phone on my mouse mat, and I'm just like spinning my phone around, and it, <laughs> it hit my mouse, which hit it towards the edge of the screen. It hit it far enough to go to the edge of the screen. <laughs> and, um,. Then we uh, zoomed off in the other direction away from this Reaper, which does come into the main base now. Six links on the way though, and then uh, I'm sure gonna have to play a little bit more uh, stand in this game, considering it's not kind of gasless for ECC. This one drone will be able to become a spore crawler. Its uh, dreams and aspirations have come true to be one of the drones to actually become a building on a map. And then he gets cancelled, and all his hopes and dreams wither away. It's like, you got accepted, you've made it out of drone school. You become a spore crawler now. He's like, yeah, I graduated. And then he's like, no, actually, we uh, messed up your tests. You know, you didn't actually pass. <laughs> Getting back to mining. And the bro drone's like, no. And he's like, sat here, like, licking his runes from, like, all the trials he went through to try and become a spore crawler. And he's, like, still, like, only, like, had half his efficiency. And all the drones are, like, looking at him because they're like, wow, what, what is this guy? This guy's a little bit odd. Like, he's, uh, he's like, only got half health. Thought he could become a spore crawler. He's like, he's that guy. He's the guy who was a spore crawler but wasn't. Okay, I think I'm going a little bit crazy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I, I've just realised I've been pretending to be a drone for like a minute or two, which isn't uh, really a very standard thing to do. I'm sure I was going to get caught with these lings across the map um, a little bit earlier than his speed will kick in here, so he's going to have to start splitting them away to try and keep them alive. Three already going down. I think he's going to lose, lose at least one more, and there is one more going down. These two to the north side are going to try and sneak back in, perhaps? Perhaps? Engineering bear up, though, so there's no gap in that wall. Signal speed finished, and all six lings will end up going down, and uh, that will be them. Killed off here, and um, back over here. This drone is finally starting to... Get past his days of being bullied, being indifferent. He's finally going to get back to full HP. He's finally going to be like all the other drones. There he is. He's finally accepted for what he is again. 
A lot of people saying good to see some uh, drops against Mech. Man, it's so true. Like it used to be, like it used to be such a common thing to see. But then you know we had that phase in Rings of Liberty when Mech players went Banshees as the way to just deal with everything, and um, so we didn't see it so much anymore. I, don't, I guess why don't we see it so much now? I don't really know. I, I, I don't know actually. When I think about it, like. I guess I just think it's one of them things that Terran players generally know how to deal with if they know what's going on and Goody is actually gonna follow up with Banshees of his own here. He starts his third CC again a lot later than that last game, but we'll have these Banshees on the way out to look to do some damage. Double Evo Chamber, Rotron for Namshark and expecting him to go into missile upgrades here in the next few moments. Yeah, he's going to try and run back into towards this third base, but Namshaw hasn't saturated this just yet. I mean, a, free, a few drones, but not too many. He's got a few lings out to help him defend early on here as well. A couple of mines on the way for Goody once more, and uh, Banshee also. As these two mines are going to come in and intercept this Overlord. Let's get a nice view of an Overlord being blown up. Ah, they could have waited for the um, Overlord to pass the barracks. Now some poor SUV is going to have to come and clean that mess up. Mine, so inconsiderate. I'm sure it's a little bit of a supply block from that, but um, not too much of a, um, not too much of an issue. Banshee coming through to the center of the map. Cool Luigi Starcraft says, hello, GG's today, go Namshaw. Go, go Namshaw. Again, Namshaw seems to have a lot of the cheers in the chat. As um, the scripture just manages to survive again, please do share who you're cheering on, guys. It's always very interesting to know who the who the stream is favouring, who the chat is cheering, who they want, who you guys want to see win, and uh, it gives us a little bit of something to talk about here. While there's again not really loads going on early on in the um, early on in this game. Um, I mean, okay, there's there's a little bit. I mean, there's some Hellions and a Banshee moving around, but I mean, it's, it's not too much to comment on. The mech weapons coming in, Roach attacks coming in. This time, Namshaw is not investing into Burrow. He's not. Uh, has he got Roach speed already? No, so not getting that just yet. Does he have a lair? Yes, he does. So just no lair upgrades just yet coming in. But I'm sure he'll um, start to work towards that soon. And, okay, now he does go for Burrow and Roach speed at the same time. So maybe we do see a little bit more of the same here. Um, okay, no, we don't. We see a Tidal stand and an Infestation pick coming down. So there's going to be a very quick tech towards um, a Hive and uh, Roach Hide with Viper, essentially, at this point. So this is going to be... Um, it's going to be a little bit uh, different from that last game, I suppose you could say. Very different from that last game. The tensions sometimes are long and tiresome. I know. I go off and one a little bit too often, but at the same time, I mean, you know, we've seen the early game of a StarCraft game so often, there's so little to say. I have to talk to myself because, you know, I'm like, uh, whoa, 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 the Italian's finding the money load, the money shots. I have to talk to myself sometimes without a kill caster, you know, make up things to say, pretend I'm a drone. What can you do? It's a tough life. I'm just trying to be interesting. Again, I, I probably at this point probably should be talking about the game. I mean, you see a couple of Hellions. Um, cleaning up, doing a little something here and there. Just trying to kill a um, couple of drones. Creep spread once again. Pretty far from Namshaw. Kind of all the way across this left hand side of the map and starting to push out towards the right hand side as well. I mean, the, the creep up these alleyways is actually very important because if you have creep up these alleyways, it's going to give you kind of warnings of when. We see, oh, you know, it's going to give you a bit of a warning of, you know, Hellions coming in for a run by or so. So it gives you a lot of time to prepare. Interesting fourth, uh, fifth base from Namshaw here. Very forward location. I wonder if he's just going to try, he thinks this game might go long. And so if he can try and mine as much as he can from this base right now, it will benefit him later on. It definitely makes sense because it's kind of on Goody's side of the map because Goody's probably going to take this base. No, I, I guess it's kind of weird. It's not really on anyone's side of the map. It really is right in the center. Mm, it's a little bit weird, and I, I mean, immediately Goody's going to move forward to try and take this down. Namshaw not really in a position where he can deal with this. Um, he can't really fight this army at all until he gets his uh, few Hydras out and gets uh, some Vipers coming up as well. Yeah, okay, there's no way he's going to be able to save this Hatcher, though. This is almost definitely going to be going down. And um, a few Roaches, ooh, they don't want to do that just yet. He just has to cancel this Hatcher. I mean, a little bit of a shame. I mean, he loses a drone, he loses some minerals, but... 
not too much what he is really losing is when he's um, trying to move forward here with some of his units. He's got a Spire on the way up. Uh, Goody seems to be pretty well prepared though. I mean, I wonder if this is for Broodlords, kind of like a transition out of... I mean, because he's gone into Hive, but he's gone into Hive, he's not made any Vipers yet. There we go, five Vipers on the way. He needs them kind of soon though, because Goody's not actually relenting with this push forwards across the map. Um, so he's going to start cleaning up a lot of this group, which Namshaw has been working so, so hard on. A few drones moving up towards the top right corner of the map. I wonder if that's a miss rally or whether he really wants to try and take a base up there. He's going to need another base soon, because I don't think there's a way he can actually defend this fourth base right now. He seems to be a little bit late in terms of having enough stuff to be able to deal with this. Drones are trying to run away. They're going to maybe have to go through these albats, and that's a little bit of a barbecue. Um, but at least a lot of them getting away there. The fourth base goes down, and again, that's going to be a little bit of a detriment to Namshaw's style here. He does now at least have his Vipers on the way up though, so he can begin slowly picking away at this army, picking uh, units in towards his Roach Hydra composition. A couple of blinding cows as well, his upgrades are finishing up too, Groove Spines 2-2. Two, two. And, uh... Well, just some more creep being cleaned up. Of tanks being cleaned up as uh, we're actually going to see these uh, vipers abducting forwards here and um, tanks just being picked away at here and not really too much else to say. He's going to run into a couple of mines though. There's a little bit of splash onto the roaches there. Uh, okay, good. He does have a lot of tanks to siege up, although that's the fourth base of him, which is something Namshaw sees but decides not to actually attack there. So just pull him back. Um, Namshaw is maxed out. He's doesn't. Okay, he's got base coming up to the top right, but he really does need to kind of establish a fourth base a little bit closer. Because as soon as Goody sees that base in the top right, he's going to know about. You know, he's going to be immediately able to come forwards and start. Uh, you know, clean that out. It's not going to survive very long once it's known about. And again, the scoop spread to the left hand side going to give Namshaw a bit of a warning of this uh, incoming Hellion play. There's a few Hellbats moving through the center of the map alongside these early game Reapers, just uh, cleaning up a couple of creep tumors here. So again, Namshaw actually having very little vision in the center now. Um, these few Hellions did come around and they headed into that third base and they will, uh, one of them is going to be able to live to tell the tale. Stopped for a moment to one single Hydra left to chase it away there as um, I'm sure I'm going to pick up the kill on that as he moves through to the centre of the map. Both players maxed out at this point. And it's going to be, again, difficult for Namshaw to engage this. He's actually mining with quite a lot of drones to this top right-hand side. So, again, he feels as though he's just trying to mine out bases which are potentially not going to be as easy to take later in the game or bases which Goody's going to want later in the game. Because uh, that's kind of how the Zerg player is going to want to think about this game, you know. He's not going to be trading as efficiently. Uh, and that's a bit of a weird abduct. It wasn't really into the best of positions for the Roach Hider to deal with. You know what? Goody's actually very out of position to defend his third base. This Roach Hider army is going to come straight up here and... Wow, these uh, Vikings need to be very careful. There's a bunch of abducts forwards here. Again, just looking to try and clean out whatever he can. He needs to get a few more uh, siege tanks sieged up, it feels like, on the third base. A couple of fours getting abducted forwards into this. This has been a very good trade for Namshaw. Um, you know, he's not been fighting into siege tanks at all here. He's been trading just against Hellbats and fours. Now the siege tanks finally getting enraged, finally doing something. But Namshaw, he's going to be able to remax very effectively. And that was actually a fantastic trade from Namshaw. Look at the resources lost. 9.5k loss for Terran, 11.5k for the Zerg, and I mean, honestly, it's it's usually a lot more, you know, it's usually a much larger gap than that, so this is really nice from Namshaw. He might once again lose this base here, and I think he will, as good he moves up this ramp, he's going to see it immediately, and Namshaw doesn't have them reinforcements out just yet to be able to get something going. So, um... Yeah, tanks are skinning up a roach two in the middle, a scan coming down, some creep being cleaned out, and, um... Well, the Queen's being cleaned out in the centre as well. Goody pushing through here. Both players, fairly similar supplies. And uh, the problem for Namshaw is he has to find a way to engage against this siege tank line, which is already beginning to be set up. He has to back away. And is he just going to come in here? He's actually going to come in. A lot of these siege tanks are not sieged. And if they siege right now, he's not going to make the most of it because he's uh, going to get blind and clouded. And I think that was a very good response from Goody to kind of not siege up. I mean, it sounds weird, but I think he realised he'd just get caught in one massive blinding cloud. It would have been a waste of time, so he just stayed on siege and... Well, it was a mistake to begin with, but again, he made the best of the situation. I feel like Namshaw, another great fight for him here. As he pushes through, he's going to take down a couple more tanks at least. And again, every single tank he can take down, the better. And um, he's got more and more roaches, more and more hydras coming in. There's still a few units here for our uh, Terran player. How many uh, Vipers do we have left? Just two on the field, and they don't have that much energy. As these hydras, roach, a queen coming forward here. These uh, Vipers don't have the energy, and if I can work in a way against them, just one Viper left now. And Namshaw... Despite what looked to be actually a good fight, okay, there's the reinforcers. That was what we've really been looking for here, and now he's going to be able to clean this up because there's not, you know, this tank line isn't that deep. There's not that many tanks here, 
And uh, Goody's going to lose the rest of this. And even these Vikings are going to get chased away. They're going to just be able to get away from the Hydras, though. And, um... Oh, what happened to the separate right base? Did Goody realize that was there? No, he hasn't. So uh, Namshot is just pulling some of his drones back into a more normal location to mine from. And because um, he definitely had a lot more drones up there at one point. I guess actually maybe not. I guess it was just maybe the spores and the spines. Um, they go start coming across the map now though, and Namshot has actually got a pretty significant advantage following that um, last engagement. And this Roach Hydra is just going to keep pushing forward. See a turret going to go down. And Goody just doesn't have much at all. And Namshaw is going for the throat. We've got a few Halbats down at the bottom left. And that's a base which Namshaw's not going to be all too worried about. These Halbats are going to go down. And I think Goody is actually going to be in a little bit of trouble. I mean, he's going to siege a tank on the high ground. But Namshaw's already making his way up this ramp. And if he can just sit on top of this production, slow down any further units coming out, it's going to be so difficult for Goody to deal with from this point on. Namshaw going to just... Uh, have to move forward to clean out this tank, and it's not because I don't think the SCVs to prepare and it are going to be enough. And uh, more and more tanks going down, and again, more units coming through the center of the map. Some queens have been attacked by SCVs and Vikings. Not something you see every day, but again, the real action is in the main base. As Namshaw is just going to clean up everything, GG is called, and Namshaw takes a 2-0 lead in this best of five, guys. Namshaw, go introduce our players um, instead of me contemplating things. In the bottom right corner of the map from ESC Gaming, it's Goody. And in the top left corner from Connor G Sports, it's Namshaw. Did I happen to play Ultimate Tournament 2K4? I'm assuming that's Ultimate Tournament uh, like five to seven years ago. I did not. Um, losing five vibe is big. Like, yeah, this is what I'm saying. I was just talking in chat about my thoughts about why that first fight was good for Namshaw. And well, what I actually really didn't realize during the fight was that he lost all of his Vipers, which makes it very, very different, obviously. Um, I thought he kept a lot of his Vipers alive, but he didn't, which maybe doesn't make it as good as it was, but I still think it was good because, you know, what else are you going to do as a Zerg player? You know, at some point you have to trade out this Roach Hydra to get into something else. And, you know, trading, you know, getting rid of the Hellbats, getting rid of the four, a few fours it, and the Vikings, it really softens up that mech army. And you saw when Goody pushed across the map, okay, he kind of screwed up. But when there's nothing in front of the tanks, it's so much easier for the Roaches and Hydras to actually be able to start picking away at them. Instead of just having to go through the Hellbats and then finally reach the tanks when half the Roach Hydra is dead. So, I, I mean, it's it's a very hard thing to call, right? Like, it's, it's very hard to say, was that fight good? But... I kind of feel like it really was, like, it was a lot better than most fights you see with Roach Hydra against Mech. And, I mean, Namshaw's economy was a lot stronger than Goody's, and that's something to take into account too. He wants to trade. Sure, he doesn't want to trade, you know, he wants to trade as effectively as possible, and that's not usually what happens versus Mech, but that was a lot more efficient than what you usually see. Which is kind of why I thought, again, losing the Vipers does kind of suck, and that is something I didn't realise when I was, you know, talking, but I still feel as though that was a really good trade. It, it, it's a really interesting discussion, but like, um, I mean, I mean, he killed like three fours, he killed like five, six Vikings. I think he killed more than three fours. He killed a couple tanks as well, and um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's a, it, it's one of them things. Like, you can discuss it all day. What you think is good, what you think was a good decision, what you can think is a bad decision. I mean, so much of it, like, you know, I'm I'm not a pro player, so so much of it can only be opinions, but. I, I kind of feel like that went a lot better for a Zerg player than you'd usually see a fight going for, which is, in my opinion, a good fight. Anyways, um, I'm, not, I'm not arguing because, just because I think you're wrong. I think you definitely have a point, but, like, I'm not just trying to like, be a dick and say I'm right because, you know, I definitely could be wrong as well. I'm just trying to say my own thoughts on it now that we've got a little bit of time to discuss it because at the time, you know, everything was moving along very quick. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was an interesting fight. It was an interesting game. The mech player kind of being caught, well, I feel was a little bit out of position, but... Anyways, let's talk about Echo here. And, um, I mean, not really too much going on to start the game off. I mean, for now, we just have the, um, expansion coming down. It's just been some Marines to start off in this game, and uh, I'm expecting the factory and the reactor in a few moments' time here. So no real, um, surprises right now from, um... <coughs> from Goody. Going to go into these React Italians. Uh, Marines actually pick off another Zergling at the front door. And uh, they're actually going to poke off out into the middle of the map a little bit. That overlord's on high ground, so he's not going to be able to pick that off just yet. Maybe a little bit later in the game. There's another overlord over here, which would have been able to get onto high ground as well if it, uh, these four Marines started attacking it. So he kind of looked at a guess um, because he just kind of dodged the Marines, but he's kind of okay. There's an overlord in the front here, though, and this actually might be a little bit difficult to deal with. Um, however, we do have, the Marines are actually heading towards the third base, where there is also another Overlord, but also this uh, drone needs to kind of pull away, because um, it's going to go get taken down. If it gets taken down, 
Well, oh, Namshaw's third base will be delayed here. Loses that overlord, and that's a nice little poke by Goody. Some early damage done by him. Very, very nicely. Okay, cool. So that was, um, that's actually been a pretty nice opening from Goody here. And going into a starport now, and he is building the tech lab, so I guess this will be a bounty follow up. For a couple of moments, I kind of thought maybe we see something which we saw a little bit earlier from, from was it Muyuk? Um, where he goes for this kind of Hellion drop play, because Marine Hellion drop, or Marine drop, and then running by with Hellions can be very, very strong, very effective. And um, the way Goody's opened has definitely kind of lent towards that possibility. If he added the starboard on and didn't get the tech lab, he'd have about eight marines out with four hellions and a medevac. So it could have worked out, but he um, decides against it. Adds an engineering bay as part of his wall right now. And I'm sure just with a few lings. Zergon Speed only just on. Very late Zergon Speed in this game. Um, wow, did he. Wow, he was gasless for quite some time. Okay, so he's. I mean, very late because he was just gasless up until the kind of the six minute mark. So kind of going back to what he did in Varney. And uh, I guess the reason that wasn't kind of totally obvious was because his third base did get denied by that little push out of Goody here. So, kind of nice um, stuff by um, kind of nice so far. Um, neither player really kind of like taking advantage or anything, obviously. But um, I'm sure I think getting himself into a position he'd be quite happy and quite content to be in. Rotron is um, up, maybe? Yes, it is. Which one's up and plus one missiles on the way. There's finishing. So again, I mean, Namshaw's getting into kind of everything he'd want at this point. Maybe wouldn't want to lose these drones, which are going to start being barbecued. And again, this is kind of the problem here with this, uh, the way he's opened. Um, in game number one, this was very different because Goody opened with uh, three CCs before, um, oh, the other two Zerglings have been heroes here. And um, these Italians will be turned away. In, in game one, Goody opened 3cc with no gas, so of course he didn't really have any early Hellions, which is the difference between that game and this game. Um, this time around, Namshaw, when he's opened gasless, he's had a little bit more trouble dealing with the actual presence of Hellions onto the map. That being said, I mean, what, he's lost seven workers, he's killed off a couple of Hellions, I mean, killing Hellions against Mech isn't the biggest of issues. It's nice, but again, it's not like when you play against Bio, when there's only six Hellions on the map, so if you kill them, the kind of Terran player loses all of his map control, and he loses the ability to hold his third base as easily as early on. So it's not that big of a deal losing these Hellions, so I think seven workers is pretty nice for Goody. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I'm sure I've so he's, he's got plenty of workers, I mean, he was on, he was like a 15 worker lead. Uh, very early in this game, anyways. Alright, so. A couple of mines just burrow in the middle of the map, which can be quite effective if uh, Namshaw doesn't see them. Uh, fortunately for him, he's actually going to have a couple of lings running through the middle initially, so it's actually the lings that are going to go off on him. Namshaw is probably going to prefer to lose Zerglings here than his um, roaches, or taking damage on his roaches. Three overlords killed already this game. Namshaw continually being hit back in towards the supply block here. <laughs> time after time it seems, but once again look at this creep spread already 10 minute mark pushing out in four different directions and basically in the four different main avenues um, of the map the four different attack paths he's really gonna have to pay attention to and keep focused on throughout the game he takes the fourth base to the left hand side so again that creep spread over here is gonna be very important to make sure you can see anything coming in this direction so you can react to it quickly but also the creep to the right hand side is gonna be very nice to keep an eye on the uh, Hellion run buys as well as we were talking about a little bit on Coda Combo. <laughs> Two mine combo, it's a little bit damaged here. These roaches moving across the map. They've picked off a turret already and an SCV. This other SCV is going to try and run away, but Namshaw is going to be able to find it here and he will move into position to just block this uh, command center from landing. For a little while, the single banshee that came out for Goody is quite interesting because he's not really moved across the map with it. He's not being aggressive. He's, um,. Oh, he's actually going to have Burrow. I didn't see Burrow come up in the upgrade tab. Okay, cool. Well, um, okay, so he's got Burrow. I mean, it's going to be slightly annoying to do. It has to use a scan, but far from the end of the world. Did, was that that SCV? Did it really run all the way to the northeast corner of the map? Crazy. Couple of Hellbats over to the west side um, on this fourth base right now. A couple of Queens will be able to move over here. I mean, this is some nice damage from Goody. I mean, it's a little bit of damage against the Hatchery. Again, even if he loses these Hellbats, it's not the end of the world. And and again, he gets the timing, he gets a bit of a read as to when the fourth phase is taken, gives us um, a little bit of information about what his opponent's up to here. Now I'm sure we'll transfuse that queen, keep it nice and healthy, as the roaches came in, just in case the queens weren't going to be able to cut, uh, it weren't going to be uh, cut out for the job. 4cc on the way for Goody, and again, it's going to be very, very passive. And, um, well, I'm just going to... Uh, Sit back here and wait for the build-up to happen. Hive on the way once again from Namshaw, and he's got Hydralisks on the way. His upgrades continuing in this game as well. And again, he's expanding aggressively, and I say aggressively in the sense that he's expanding towards his, you know, essentially on his opponent's expansions. With what I have to imagine, again, the idea being that if you can mine even a little bit, 
you know, because it's mech, it's very likely that um, in the long run, the map could become mined out. So if you can even mine a little bit from your opponent's base, especially you know as the Zerg player, you're going to be playing less efficiently. You're going to be trading less efficiently. It's how you, it's how you have to play against Mech. It's just how the compositions work. So the one thing you can do against Mech is of course expand a lot more. And so by expanding to your opponent's expansions and you know mining a little bit from them, you kind of essentially take away minerals and gas for your for the Mech player to play with and add them to your own bank. And so if the map becomes mined out. You never know, like, it, it really could come down to, you know, if you had an extra couple hundred gas and your opponent doesn't have an extra couple hundred gas, it really could come down to that sort of situation. So every little is going to help you, and I'm sure just going to get this set up, and most importantly, I think the gas. I mean, the minerals are nice, definitely, but I think the gas is one of the most important things as um, as the game goes on. The minerals are not going to be quite as important, of course, they're just kind of used as uh, for Hellbats, for Hellions. Um, same thing, obviously, but um, turrets as well. A few uh, Hellions moving out here, and you're going to see creep being spread from a base which is taken. And I think this is going to be a uh, prompt goody to move forwards here and to start pressuring into Namshar. But Namshar this time around does have his Vipers, and where are they? He's got seven of them. That's a lot of Vipers here. So he's going to have a lot of blinding clouds usable, a lot of abducts. I'm just slightly worried in case it's maybe a few too many Vipers, and not quite enough... Um, you know, not quite enough uh, Roach Hydra on the field. A little bit more Roach Hydra on the way out. This uh, hatchery probably hasn't been worthwhile, I suppose, but um, I mean, he's kind of pushed Goody forwards into more forward position, and now I guess we're going to see some abducts into the army. It's very difficult, though, with that Viking count, and he might just go for the Vikings, because if he can slow down the Vikings, he's going to get a four-hand Viking. Uh, oh, he doesn't quite get the four. There we go. Four abducts, two units. Um, but it's kind of nice. I mean... It's kind of scary going into that Viking, so if you can get rid of the Viking count, it's going to make these Vipers a little bit safer. But that being said, three Vikings being made at a time, it's not going to be the biggest of issues. But then again, trading anything for free is going to be nice, and Vikings, if that's all you can pick off, then that's brilliant here. And as this Roach Hydra again just pushing towards, doesn't want to run into the Siege Tank line. I mean, there's a lot of tanks here, so you cannot commit into this at all right now. He needs to be very careful. There's a couple of Siege Tanks being pulled forwards. There's a Hellbats coming forwards as well, and again, I think Namshaw is taking some pretty good trades here. That Viking count's been lowered quite significantly, so the Vipers are pretty much free to continue uh, trading here. Namshaw's on 94 drones, so his economy is insane. Again, taking the base aggressively on his opponent's side of the map. And again, gonna look for a quick grab here. Ooh, goody! This is, I, I, I can only see this as a little bit over eager for him to unseach so many tanks and to uh, move back with so much at the same time. And uh, Namshaw are making the most of that pixel 3-4 tanks there, so wow, this really is going well. Um, he's actually trading more efficiently than the Terran player right now, which again, I talked so much, I've been talking so much about this throughout the series, but it's so true. That efficiency of the Terran army is what makes Mech so good, and to be less efficient than your Zerg opponent is a little bit crazy. A little bit crazy. Some change engines going to advance forwards here, and they're going to get cleaned up pretty quickly. Goody on top of that. Gonna get a look for a uh, duct on this tank to the high ground once again. And uh, there's gonna be one more tank taken down here. These um, overseers are actually kind of <laughs> quite cute because uh, they actually kind of bait the shots from the Vikings and makes it a little bit safer for the Vipers to uh, do whatever they want to do. This base here, I mean, Goody's now trying to take us forth, but he's gonna find it taken by Hatchery, and so he's gonna have to commit a few units over there to deal with that. Um, only three Hellbats, and honestly, I mean, three Hellbats is something which Namshaw could peel away a few units to deal with. So um, I believe he probably will. Try and go for that. These Vipers very far forward right now. These Vikings could maybe snipe off one or two of them. How about coming in? Is Namjot going to go down around? Oh no, he's not. He's just going moving forward for the uh, abduct on the tank. I mean, it looked for a couple of moments like he was moving forward with a lot of units there. Blinding clouds coming down. Namjot, is he going to really commit to this now? It looks as though he might. Vikings are firing so much on the um, overseers, and again, not on the Vipers. How many Vipers have been killed? Three. So, um, pretty good going by Namshaw, keeping them alive and starting to switch into Ultralisk behind this Double Spy on the way as well, so you can switch into air nice and effectively. And um, these Hellbats actually pulled away from this base, so again, Goody struggling to move towards the fourth, and that's going to limit or slow his gas mining quite significantly here. As uh, <laughs> the drones just going to mine a little bit of the gas in the meantime. It's kind of weird because it's a very hard position to fight in as the Zerg, because you're very choked up, and of course, you don't really want to fight in a choke against siege tanks. Oh my god. <laughs> So many widow mines. So many widow mines. A couple of uh, changes getting taken down, and <laughs> I'm sure this base is still just uh, up over here. Goody's not taking it down, despite coming some Hellbats over there earlier, and some more Vikings continue to fall. The efficiency here is still 
just favoring Namsha, which again is insane. Goody finds a little sliver of uh, kind of uh, land which doesn't have creep over it to drop a turret. This four finally comes over and finally this base will be dealt with. But I mean, again, look at this. I mean, 200 gas mind ish. I mean, it's pretty nice. So taking 200 gas away from your opponent essentially in the long run. Banshee from earlier in the game is uh, moving around the map, trying to help out, trying to do whatever he can again. A couple of turrets being, well, trying to be dealt with right now. As uh, he actually abducts a couple of widow mines forwards, which is a little bit unique. Never seen an abduct on. I don't think I've seen an abduct on a widow mine before. So we're trying to just continue to move around here, but uh, Goody is starting to take position on this base. But again, I mean, we're talking about a, a base which should be his, and yet the Zergler is, you know, taking so much of it. So many Widow Mines buried. Oh my god, are they going to go off? Uh, nice split away is there by Namshaw, really minimizing the damage taken. I mean, again, how much progress is mind over here? Like, so, so much. And again, it's just so effective. And it's going to be really, again, in the long run, so his opponent down. He's got 4.4k, 3k, which why, is why he's probably quite happy to kind of engage into his opponent's army for a little while there. This command center over to the right may be in trouble as Namshaw gives up on this position, but. Um, you know, he's going to very quickly come over here and maybe try and take that down. He's going to back away, though. He's getting a little bit scared, perhaps, to move off of Creep. Goody moving over to this right-hand side now as well. And I'm sure his Creep team is active over here, so he'll continue to push that Creep forwards and keep it in position as, finally, we're going to see uh, Goody take control of his own fourth base. 22 minutes into this game, and sure done a fantastic job of just slowing this down. So, um... And I'm sure just going to chill out here for a little while he's pretty much controlling the entire of the map but I'm left being taken as well retaking this base which he's uh, controlled for so long in the game and goody just um, put a bunch of turrets up over here and that's not a show. I mean what what I mean he's getting all of his upgrades up right he's got kindness plane he can go into ultralisks whenever he would like to Careful, we can't fight against turrets, so be very careful backing away there. A few change engines moving forwards, and uh, well, they might get taken out. Well, not that it really matters. <laughs> I, I say it as though it's kind of important that uh, the change engines might die, uh, but it really isn't. Plan B4 is as finally established for Goody on this fourth base, so his economy will last for a little while longer than it was going to if he was stuck on those three bases, of course. What am I getting abducted forward once again? And a few Hellbats coming forwards into this position. I think these Queens, though, should probably be able to deal with these, especially if Namshal pays attention and transfuses. Uh, looks as though he's not paying attention over there just yet, though. He's actually taking a big fight over to this uh, fourth base. Widow Mine's moving forwards again here, as uh, there's going to be a lot of Widow Mine shots off, and oh my god, Namshal is getting decimated in his Hydra count. But again, he's got the money to remax, so he's not going to be all too worried about it. And that was, again, an expensive trade for Goody, it feels like. Okay, you can finally see Goody's finally starting to trade a little bit better, but again, you know, we're used to seeing, you know, I'm used to seeing kind of, you know, it's time be thousands of resources ahead and resources lost, not just, uh, you know, 1,000. It really is kind of insane. Now, sure, he's been building up his uh, air upgrades to a certain extent, but not really that much. That factory will just go down here to the northeast corner. He's been building his air upgrades up, but he's not really got too much of a plan here. It doesn't seem no great by it just yet. I imagine he's just getting it in case Goody starts going to kind of like mass wave and Viking um, or battle cruisers, and so from that point he's going to be able to you know have upgrades on his corruptors coming out, and so he'll basically just be able to overwhelm his opponent. This team melee coming in as well, so that the ultras could be introduced to this composition if you would like to as well. And Goody is just. Uh backing off a little bit again he's not maxed out just yet because he doesn't really want to build hellbats at this point he wants to continue building gas units gas heavy units but he uh, doesn't have the gas just now his main base is actually yeah, mining out of gas and I mean his natural mustn't be too far away about 1200 left in there so I mean again he's got a long you know he's got a lot of money left but I'm gonna I kind of struggle to see him actually being able to take a uh, fifth base because I mean where's he gonna take it is one of his most natural fifth bases is actually you know already well on the way to being mined out thanks to Namshaw taking it much earlier in this game. Um he's gonna Namshaw continues to move towards this upper right base. I think if he takes this upper right base though, I mean goody, can he really stretch that far? You know, this base is quite nice to hold because you, you could essentially just move forwards and set up your tank line, say, along here and you're kind of, you know, 
a little bit spread out, but not as spread out as, you know, stretching all the way up to this corner of the map. One of mine uh, catches a roach here. Is, uh, there's one SCV. It's getting a lot of treatment. <laughs> Quite a few roaches just deal with a single worker there. And Goody going to be uh, slowly moving forward to kill off this base for... I don't even know how many times he's killed off this base in this game. It's been quite a few times though. And um, every time he kills it off, he kind of backs off a little bit. Namshaw just retakes it almost immediately. Some of Ducks coming forward, these tanks getting cleaned up pretty quickly. And Namshaw just falling back because the tank line is pretty far forward at this point in time. Uh, a couple of them in range to start working away against the hatchery. Yeah, uh, just a few roaches to the upper right, making sure that base is going to stay alive. So Namshaw not too afraid of just leaving that over there. These wooden mines moving forwards and uh, a lot of them starting to get taken down already. And uh, ooh, some friendly fire from the wooden mine. Thanks to that queen taking the shots, taking one for the team. This uh, Sporko and Spankola combination still poking away at the Widow Mines for a little while longer. And this Spork getting a few shots off. He's actually picked up two kills here. Wow. An effective Spork roll, man. As uh, Namshaw has so much money in the bank. 5k, 6.5k. I mean, again, he just keeps trading and trading and trading. This is, um... I mean, really, this is just... For Namshaw, looking so, so good. Goody is ma yeah, okay, I mean, Goody's maxed out, but again, I mean, Namshaw could take the worst fight in the world, remax, take another pretty crappy fight, and then remax, and probably still just overwhelm his opponent at this point. Like, he's just got that much money. It's kind of crazy. And, um, Goody, I mean, again, his main base pretty much mined out now. His natural's gone in minerals and pretty much gone on gas, so he needs to start pushing towards for extra bases. He needs to secure a base somewhere, but again, I feel if he pushes towards this upper right base, can he really secure it? I feel like Namshaw's gonna have so many locations he can attack into instead, you know? Um, right now he could be attacking down here, picking off reinforcements. I mean, okay, he wants to try and maybe shut down Goody's main army, but even a few units could be very effective. Okay, maybe not against four fours, but maybe he just comes down here with his whole army now, because Goody's so concentrated to the upper right. And again, this mech army is not fast, it's very, very slow. It doesn't move around quickly. He cleans up that base immediately, Namshaw's just gonna drop it down again. You know, why not? Why not? Oh dear, Goody, just gonna sit here in amongst his four bases. I mean, okay, he's cleaned out this upper right base, but obviously he's got no real intention of taking it because he, you know, he hasn't stuck around. You know, he hasn't stuck around at all. He's uh, left a widow mine there, but the hatchery's already up and running. So that widow mine's not gonna do too much. Single SCV once again sent up there. In fact, a lot of SCVs been sent up there. I mean, Goody has so many SCVs, he doesn't really need them all anymore. Um, he's gonna kill off this ha uh, this hatchery once more. I mean, I guess he could long distance mine if he wanted to, but I think at this point it's just kind of better to get rid of the SCVs and to just uh, build more army anyways. I mean, he actually does have a bit of a bank finally beginning to build up here. So these SCVs are all gonna go down. They don't quite get the hatchery. There's um, Goody just, again, slowly moving against this bottom left base, getting rid of that extractor, which again has given Namshaw so much of his gas bank. Of course, this bottom left base taken by Namshaw, this base over here, the original fourth base of Namshaw, I guess it wasn't the original, was it? Did he take this base, then this base? I can't even remember at this point. It's, whoa, big abducts coming in here, Ultra's going to lead the way, and some tanks now walk forward into those Ultras, and Namshaw is just moving forward, he's going to trade against this, a lot of the Vikings going down, a lot of the Vipers falling in this fight as well though, and Namshaw going to have to disengage, probably one of the worst fights he's taken in this game, but again, when you've got the money Namshaw has, does it really matter? Look at that, resources lost to have opens up a bunch after that fight, but again, it's Goody who's going to be starved out of this game. It's Goody who's struggling to remake his army. Now I'm sure, well, he's actually supply blocked because he lost so many overseers in that little bit of a skirmish, but, he, you know, once he gets on supply blocked, he's going to be straight back up to 200 supply. No problem at all. Queen's been added in now so you can transfuse his ultras a little bit more. I'd like to see a couple of transfusers on those vipers as well, you know. The more units he can keep healthy and keep alive, I mean, why not, you know. Again, I mean, in the long run, it's a game of nutrition, so if you can trade that a little bit better by keeping your units a little bit more, you know, alive, then perfect. I think this is a bit of a preemptive engagement by Namshaw. I don't think there's really any need for him to fight just then. I mean, lost a couple of ultras, a few hydras. For no real reason, Namshaw may be getting a little bit impatient. Um... Although that being said, I mean, it would have maybe been worth it if he did just pick off those two fours, which he was so close to doing. He's going to come in here once again now as, whoops, god damn it, mouse. Um, he's going to come in here once again now. He's actually using his chinchins to block a couple of these tanks from escaping, which is kind of cute. And he's going to start once again abducting into this army. He's just abducting absolutely everything into the ultras here. And the ultras just chomping away. So much getting taken down here. But now his own chinchins are hurting him. He's going to move them away. Another four will, four will fall. 
And um, Namsha, I mean, again, a big trade on either side, but Namsha's the player with the bank. He just rebuilds immediately. He just just builds up immediately once again. Oh, so many uh, tanks pretty much gone now. Four tanks remaining on the map, so Goody really doesn't have all too much left. I mean, the four counters, like four counters, decent nine fours. But again, I mean, the tanks are the real kind of damage deals. I guess fours are pretty good against um, ultras, though, so... I mean, his composition's not dead for look at that unit's loss. 32 Vipers, 9 Ultras, 54 Roaches, 47 Hydras, 10 Fours, 45 Vikings, and 37 Tanks. And 32 Widow Mines as well. He really was making a lot of these Widow Mines earlier in the game. And wow, good, he's actually going to get towards the fifth base. But does he have what it takes? Uh, does he have what he needs to defend his fourth now? Uh, Namshaw does see this being taken, so he knows it's being taken. And where does he decide to attack into? What does he decide to do? I really feel as though he can work across this, uh, work away at this right hand side of the map quite effectively. And in fact, that might be what he's doing because he's moving all of his army up here. And um, I don't think he's just moving it up here to clean up the Hellions, right? Surely he's going to kind of advance forwards from this position with this. Someone in the chat asking for how much lava. And I mean, okay, it's three minutes later, but 76. I mean, there's just so much, it doesn't really matter. I mean, Namshaw is, you know, he's got a couple of queens to inject now and then. And I'm actually quite surprised how low the energy is. So he's been very uh, good at injecting continuously. Um, but you can see most of the bases don't even have, and I mean, he's actually got bases all over the place simply so he can, uh, you know, just, you know, just so he doesn't have to worry about injecting quite as much. And not only that, but I mean, also so he can, um, you know, obviously it's for the fact that he needs to be able to um, get them vib that Viper energy up somehow. Both base cleaned out very quickly here, and this becomes a problem. You know, how does Goody stretch himself between these different bases? You know, okay, he finally a success, I get a new base, but he loses one of his other builder bases, and he's going to now fly an orbital into position to try and take that there, but I mean, it's going to be very much very much the same, I think. Um, once that base goes up, Namshaw now moving over towards the center of the map, and I mean, uh, again, I mean, the investors mixed in here, queens for transfusers, and uh, Namshaw is just starting to take some posi a position here. A lot of mines, again, will be good for zoning the Zerg out or slowing his advance. I mean, I'm sure really has been controlling this game, you know, for, since about like the 15th minute mark, he has been on the map, he has been controlling, he's never really been pushed back, good, he's never really been able to push away from his kind of handful of bases which he ha owns. Nice fungal growth there, really good catch on these Hellions as this orbital will land over towards the right hand side where that fourth base was, but once again we're just going to see the commitment up here and guess what, Goody's army isn't nearby, this orbital kind of has to lift, and um, I guess once he lifts there's not really, uh, there's actually nothing that really shoots up, uh, some hydras, but they don't want to move too far forwards, they don't really want to move into the potential tank line on the low ground, during that we saw once again just some Vikings trading away as they get abducted into the army. And um, whoa, force moving forward here, get a few shots onto the Overseer Cloud. The Sorbital did survive, good, he's not repairing it right now though, it is falling in hit points, he's actually very interested in just continuing to move forwards here. Looking to maybe clean out this top right base once again, oh goody. Okay, he's gonna realize he's gonna start repairing that, but oh, big fungal growth on a lot of these Vikings, and now these Vikings are all gonna go down, big blinding cloud on the force here. The Ultras are just gonna keep on chasing, they're gonna go into a little bit of a minefield, okay, but... Goody is just going to lose the majority of his army, and he's just going to type out GG. Congratulations, Namshaw. He qualifies for the Home Story Cup 11. Three.